Jewelry makers and hobbyists rejoice. The new infrared laser module from Xtool finally gives us the ability to engrave all types of metal and plastics, unlock traditional blue light diode lasers. Let's do some testing and see if this is worth the current price tag of $559. Before we jump to the testing, let's look at some key features of the infrared module you will want to know. I don't want to go full nerd on you with the specs here, so in simple terms, what makes this laser so different is the infrared wavelength that it engraves at. The 1064 nanometers of light allows the marking of metals much better than the traditional blue light lasers, even the 20 watt version. Up until now, you needed to buy a marking spray to get a reasonable etch or spend a ton of money on a fiber laser, which is out of most people's budget. The infrared diode also allows for the engraving of plastics, acrylic, and leather with greater accuracy without the scorching and melting of materials. The infrared module also pulls a win over its blue light diode brothers with an overall engraving and movement accuracy. One thing this unit will not do is engrave wood. It is not designed for that. With all that said, let's get to some real world tests to see how this performs. Also, you can find the links to this laser module below. The first thing we need to do is to install the infrared module. This is basically a plug and play. When using this module, always make sure to use the correct power cord. I marked mine so I knew which one it was. For the first test, we are engraving a wrench. To do this, we are first going to set the laser focus on the material. Now we measure the area that we want to engrave in height and width. I highly recommend doing this with a digital caliper. Now we are going to plug our measurements into the Creative Space software that we just previously got. I'm going to use the stock stainless steel settings that Creative Space recommends. Now we are going to let this run, and I'm also going to perform this same test using the 20 watt blue diode laser. The test on the wrench turned out awesome. As you run your thumbnail across the lettering there, you can feel a small catch, which means the etch is set. If you we are now performing the same test on the 20 watt version at 100% power, and let's see what happened. Nothing. You can see where the 20 watt didn't even touch this, and as I flip it over, this is the side that I engraved with the infrared laser. So from here on out, I will not be using the 20 watt for any more of the projects here. For this next project, I am using a necklace made out of stainless steel. There was no hiccups here and this completed pretty fast and you can see we have a good etch on this. For this next part, I am going to engrave a ring, and this is super simple, and I go over this in another video, but I am going to take my digital caliper and measure the circumference of the ring, plug that number in, and then tell Creative Space that I am using the RA2 Pro attachment. The engraving turned out a little offside since my RA2 got a little off center, but overall I am happy with what we have. I have the ring and pendant attached to this necklace and it turned out pretty cool. Now my niece wanted this, so I will be giving this to her. For this next project, I am engraving plastic. Now I wanted to try something crazy and engrave this picture on the back of a remote. So the first try did not turn out very well. So I redid my settings and I stopped it early because I could see that I didn't have my settings dialed in and I knew that I was working with a difficult image. But you can kind of see the image of the guy with his ax there. I know most people wouldn't want to engrave an image. I'm just doing this to test a machine. So I came back and put a font at the bottom and this completed in like 20 seconds. And I'm super happy with the way that this turned out. So if you need to engrave some type of plastics, just use your imagination here. I'm just simply giving you a test. 
For this next project, we are engraving some fake leather. Now this completed really fast, and if I had to do this over again, I would increase the power on this machine and make it etch just a little deeper. But overall, this is really nice, and if I was using my blue diode laser, I would have some scorching around here. So just play with your settings and make sure that they are right. And sometimes the stock settings are not the best settings, but just play around with it and you'll find what works best for you. Now I am engraving this gold plated key holder. And as I was doing this, I discovered a problem with creative space. And if you look here, after I got through engraving, Part of this did not engrave. It's like a very just fainted image on the top. Since this wasn't working, I updated Creative Space and restarted my laser and everything started working again. So I decided to take on a new project and do this brass dock tag. I did the same image and this turned out fantastic. Look how dark the etching is there. If you get at an angle, it will look slightly gray, but overall, you can feel the etch in there just slightly. So I am really happy with the way this turned out. I wanted to do some more tests on stainless steel, so I am engraving this card holder with this intricate design to see how accurate this is. And wow, after this completed, I can say that I am honestly impressed at this point by looking at this detail. This is what I was really wanting out of this laser and looking at the intricate lines this did a fantastic job. I wanted to test the same design on a smaller scale, so I took this gold pendant and did the same thing, and this took probably about around 15 minutes. And after I got it out, I am honestly impressed with this. Now, I didn't get the design centered up, but I am looking at the small design, and it got the intricacies really good. I, I'm pretty blown away by this test right here. This exceeded my expectations. I had this cheap multi-tool laying around, so I decided to engrave this as well. And it's looking pretty good here. I wanted to do one more quick test on stainless steel, so I engraved this pendant that can go on a dog necklace. And it turned out pretty good. Now for my favorite part, we are going to clean a coin and I placed this penny down here and I had my settings turned up too high and too slow and I actually ended up burning this penny, removing some metal from it. So I stopped the test and I started with another one and after I bumped my speed up to 200, it turned out fantastic. So I just did half of this penny from 1976 and it turned out perfect. I mean, that is so cool. Now, I don't recommend engraving old coins, especially if they are collectible, because you will destroy the value. So please don't do that. So, but anyway, overall, this was really fun to do. I may have to do some more of these. There's just something satisfying about that. Before I tell you my conclusion and the things I don't like about this infrared module, let me tell you some things I do like. Number one, the ease of use. You saw earlier that this is a plug and play. You can just plug this right in and get results fast, especially with Xtools Creative Space software. I used the stock settings for almost every project here. Having this infrared module paired with the blue light diode is like having the best of both worlds. I can engrave metal with this one and cut wood and engrave wood with the other one. And I think these complement each other really well. Another thing I like about this, which is going into the things I don't like, just hear me out, is the price. When you compare this to a fiber laser or buying a lot of marking sprays, well, this seems to be the choice right here. But with that being said, let's get to the things I do not like. This is a standalone unit, meaning that if you buy this infrared module, it comes with just this piece right here. It does not come with a frame. You will need to buy this as an add-on. So if you already own a laser engraver cutter from Xtool, you can just buy this and it's a plug and play. If you do not own any type of Xtool laser engravers or cutters, you will need to buy the laser engraver and cutter, which comes with the blue light diode and you will have to add this as an add-on. I know this can get pricey, but you can make back your investments. In fact, in the middle of recording this video, I was reached out to by a local bank and they asked me to engrave the glass on this cigar box. 
and it turned out great. And I made me some fast cash for that way. So just know you can make some money with this once you put yourself out there. In conclusion, should you buy this? If you are a jewelry maker or a hobbyist and know that there are some projects out there that you will want to make metal with, well, this is still cheaper than buying a fiber laser or a ton of marking spray to get an etch on metal. Also, making projects out of acrylic, which I didn't really test, it performs out of this world from what I am seeing. If you know that you will use the infrared laser, then I would definitely consider it. For those of you wanting one that doesn't already have the x laser, like I said, it can be pricey up front since you have to buy the infrared laser separate from the x laser engraving system. And if you already own an x diode laser, then the infrared module will be a worthy upgrade if you can afford it. You can find links to this infrared module in the laser engraving system I recommend below. Watch my other video here to learn about laser engraving if you are a beginner. It will answer a lot of the questions that you have right now. See you guys in the next video.